being thankful. Amen. That time is now. Yes. Amen. It's always been, but brother, hey, it's time to get it run. Yes. Amen. And run like you ain't never ran before. Yes. Amen. As we are engaging in such dark hours and dark times. Yes. Man's extremities have always been God's opportunities. Yes. Amen. To show himself strong and to let men and women know that he is God. Amen. I just believe, amen, and even over the ether and the internet, amen, there's many that's in seasons in their life, amen, that God has allowed and seen and they've got to places and it's for the purpose of them realizing, look here, amen, it may look like it ain't no hope, but I am hope, amen, I'm God and he's able to do what men think is impossible, amen, he can change your life. Amen. Save you, heal you, deliver you, and strengthen you. As we look to him in prayer, Father, again, we thank you. We do come before your presence with praise and thanksgiving. We thank you for the service thus far. The sweet spirit, the communion of it that's in this room even now. Oh, let it reverberate, oh God, even over the ether. To bless men and women. We thank you for those that tune in. And we thank you, oh God, for giving the heart the desire to even tune into these services. I pray, God, that you do it for them. That that's down in the sanctum of their soul that cry. Oh, for the more of you that they long for, that they're looking for, manifest your help in the name of Jesus. As we stand on your word tonight and preach, you said faith come by hearing and hearing by your word. Send your word on tonight to minister to every need. In the name of Jesus, let the anointing of the power of God Destroy every yoke, lift burdens and open doors, make ways. Let them see that in you they can live. Let every believer, oh God, mount up in confidence, not being ashamed of you. Oh, but loving you for loving them. In the name of Jesus, have your way in this word on tonight. And we'll forever give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said amen. Amen. That's right. Put those hands together for him one more time. Oh, bless his name. It is a joy and an honor, amen, to be here. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Again, we do thank the Lord. We thank God, amen, for one more time. It's a blessing to be able to hold my brothers and sisters. Amen. In God. Thank God on tonight that you're pressing your way. We thank God for those that may not be here. Amen. For various reasons. I pray as always that God keep them in perfect sound and strengthen the inward man. Amen. Never to give up. Never to look back. Amen. Never to throw the towel in. This message and word that's been coming lately. Amen. Look at here. If you have felt like you just threw that towel on the floor and threw your tantrum. Amen. You get down there and pick that towel up. Amen. And get back in this race. Amen. Because God is not through with you yet. There's hope. Amen. But you got to run on, amen, to see what the end is going to be. Amen. I mean, in a good way, praise God. We ain't trying to see it like those unbelievers going to see it. But oh my God, I believe heaven is a reward that waits upon those that have prepared themselves. Amen. That have not got caught up with the rudiments of this world. Amen. That have not got caught up in the systems and the gadgets and all the stuff that the enemy has done on this earth. But they are looking to the king of kings. 
the author and finisher of their faith and they are receiving everything that their Lord and Savior hung on that cross, bled, suffered stripes, died and got up for them to have. Amen. And I'm just here on tonight, amen, as a messenger from the Lord, amen, to make you to know and continually understanding, amen, that Christ is the answer and with him you can make your escape. Is that all right? Tonight, amen, we're going to be, we're going to go directly into the word on tonight. We're going to go to Genesis, the 19th chapter of Genesis chapter 19. It is our prayer always, amen, amen, as you uh, follow along with us, amen, have your Bibles, read with us, amen, uh, it's something that we're encouraging here upon this rock, so, and I believe it should be throughout the land for all men that have become believers and those that even have not. If there's ever been a time to you acquaint yourself with scriptures and get an understanding, those days has always been, but it is now. Amen. When all that is upon the land, all these diabolical teachings and doctrines, amen, all this stuff that has erupted from the bottomless pit of hell, amen, that, that, that have seen to try to change the grace of our God, amen, into lasciviousness and amen, man that stands up and teach and they feel like, hey, after getting saved and knowing the Lord, they still don't believe you can live godly. They still don't believe you can walk in victory. They still think you can tittle tattle, amen, in your sins that he delivered you from, amen. But on tonight, God would have a sound, amen, in the spirit of our mind and the sanctum of our soul that we can really rejoice in our salvation, those that have it, and realize if he has saved us from it, amen, that means that you don't have to go to it. Somebody say amen. Amen. If he delivered you out of it, amen, you know, he don't want you to get back in it like the sow gets back into the mud. You know, it's something about that, that pig spirit, amen. He just like that mud. Amen. You can clean them up. Amen. And I tell you, he's going to find himself getting right back in that moment. Amen. Because that's the type of spirit he has. Amen. With some of this, the way people believe and think on someday, it make you wonder. Amen. Because they just don't think you can live without doing what you used to do. Amen. But that's a lie. And the devil is the author of it. Amen. Look at here. I'm yet preaching and I still believe that he makes men and women new creatures. All things pass away. Amen. And behold, all things become new. He give you understanding and knowledge how to present yourselves. A living sacrifice. Amen. And you ain't running around here doing this like so many have done in Zion, Mother. They so sad and like they got a ball and a chain on them. And they feel like they in bondage. But who told you that? Amen. If any man be in Christ, he free. Because who the Son make free, he's free indeed. Now let's get that freedom together. That don't mean you're free to keep going back in what messed the world up. Amen. Disobedience got us in this state of needing a savior. And when you get forgiveness of your sins and your disobedience, you ain't trying to mess up no more. Amen. You're trying to go on and obey your father. Somebody say amen. Let's look into this on tonight. If there would be a title of what we're about to get off into, it would be Escape for Your Life. <laughs> Escape for your life. Amen. And if there was a subject, amen, I would say unto you, it would be Jesus has provided a fire escape. Come on here, somebody. Amen. Your way out is him. Thank God. Amen. We're just not going to leave you out there. If you're messed up, I know a way you can get unmessed up. If, if, if you're down, I know a way you can get lifted up. If you bound, I know one that died and rose again to make you free. Amen. And if any man, I don't care what you in, how much you have done, there is a way to escape. Amen. The corruption that's in this world and he will give you new beginnings. Somebody say amen. Amen. Watch this on tonight if you have it in your Bible. Genesis 19 verse 17. Amen. Everybody say amen. amen. Read for me. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth 
of the rod. Yes. That he said, Escape for your for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Oh my. Escape to the mountain, mm -hmm. lest thou be consumed. Now here it is, amen. God revealed to Abram. Amen. Abraham, what he was going to do in Sodom and Gomorrah. And because of the relationship that he had with one, they got to know him. Amen. Just not experience him. He got to know him. I mean, it was Abram, amen, that didn't know the true and living God, but he began to contemplate. His heart began to go towards it got to be something better. It got to be more to this than, ah, uh, here it is. I'm with my dad, and we making these little gods and these stone gods, amen, and people are bowing down and worshiping. It got to be something that's bigger than us, amen. And because Abram, amen, was where he was, and the Lord Lord himself began to deal with Abraham, he called him out, and it went like this, come out from among them, amen, come out from among them, amen, and Abraham staggered not, amen, he didn't go, you know, uh, you know, is this really God, or should I do it, uh, it, it you know, I got so much down here, and, and so much, no, 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 Abraham heard the voice, because I tell anybody, when you really hear the voice like you post to up, get you out of that spot. Amen. And Abraham began to journey on and walk down before God and being and he found himself perfectly obeying the commandments of God. Amen. And because of that relationship that he built with God, amen, God used Abraham in a tremendous way. Amen. To really, if you allow me, amen, to subtopic really the Bible. Amen. In such a way, amen, as Abraham got to know him and drew nigh to God and got closer than what he drew nigh to fell off on him. Amen. I mean, you know, as you get close to him, the more you be come like him. Eh, yes, yes, yes. The more you draw nigh unto him, the more you put yourself in that mirror. Amen. Oh, yes. He began to do things in you you ain't never been able to do. Amen. And you find yourself, amen, resembling your father. You know how it is, amen. Even in the natural kids coming to the world, amen, you know, you're looking for them to look like, look like one of you now. Amen. The mother of the father. Amen. And I mean, at the end of the day, amen, look at you. God is more wiser than you. He know that, that he begin, amen, it should become and look like him. Amen. And I got to set this straight out here because sometimes the devil has some folks way over in right field, way over in left field, but we want to put this thing together. Amen. That we'll find ourselves looking like our God. And I mean, he gave us a resemblance how this thing is supposed to be when he came in the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. And what I found out, and I want to make men and women to understand. Amen. When we're looking like him, I'm talking about in character conduct, in your spirit. Why do you say it like that? Because see, some, amen, they do the outward. They do the outward and they put the cart before the horse, but your inward parts, amen, is still all messed up. Amen. Mean and ragged. His spirit is not right. Have no peace. Have no love. No joy. No for parents. Amen. Really no love for God. But it's almost like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, amen, and they got their neck stretched because it's all about how men see them, amen, but oh, we got to get this relationship together, amen, that we can escape the corruption that's in this world. If you note now in Genesis chapter 19 and where she began to read at in verse 17, amen, the Bible said it came to pass because what God told Abram, Abram began to intercede, amen, for Sodom and Gomorrah and said, Lord, don't destroy the city. Will you spare it? Will you spare it? Just that spirit alone right there knocks out 90 some percent of the believers today because we have not matured and grown in God. Amen. We see the evil. We know the evil and we can see all the wrong. Amen. And we just want uh, God destroyed. I mean, my 
my God, how long send fire? Are uh, we calling fire down? Amen. But I would have you to know, honey, amen. We got to put this Bible together. The Old Testament was the law and the New Testament was grace. And you got to put these things together. Amen. To understand it's not God will that no man perish, but they all come to repentance. Amen. And so we that are saved that are the salt of the earth, amen, we got to walk circumspectly that we might receive the end of our salvation. And when this scripture encompass, amen, how and what it's going to be like when you are running for your life. Now, what Abram did, he interceded, amen, and I mean, he said, look here, he bargained all the way down, and the Lord said, I'll spare it for that. But he couldn't even find that amount, and so God dispatched angels, amen, because Lot was a part of Abraham, and I want you to grab hope to this tonight, and that's why you got to realize this thing ain't about just you. Amen. You got some stuff that's connected to you in the way of your children, your grandchildren and people. Amen. That's connected to you. Amen. He saved you with purpose that you might get in a place in him. Amen. And be the glue or uh, be the vessel that God can use to, uh, to win these souls and they come running to Jesus. Now what Abram did, he interceded that God sent the angels after talking with Abram and and they went straight to Lot House. Amen. I, you know, many times that I was in a little partial conversation and the Lord was making me to see this while we were talking. Amen. That I saw that, you know, I can understand and for many years I've watched this. Amen. That when those that's in God know God, those that's in a place that can pray, at a place, amen, that they can be of use and help, you should, amen, thank God for the saints. Amen. I know the saints go through it and you're not amen seem to be uh, looked at with value and sometimes when you seek to help amen folks look at you like you ain't helping and seem like you get the short end of the stick many times but I want to encourage you don't you sit down under no juniper tree you be encouraged and keep doing this will and work for God because it pays off amen it's not about if they hear you all we are all is vessels. All we are is instrument. Amen. This gospel is not yours. It's his. This salvation became yours, but it was his first. The peace, the joy, and everything we got because of him, it comes from him. And at the end of the day, we want to journey on and run on and do the will of God. And so when we look at this, he told him in the 17th verse, amen, the Bible said it came to pass because God God has set that day to destroy the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. I got relatives and I got people in my families and, you know, I'm, I come from a background of a religious family. Amen. Because the way they were wrong, brought up. My grandfather, you know, some people just... They, you know, they go to church, go to church, don't understand. They just go. They just do things, do things, decalogue, sing songs, and mind ain't on song. Amen. Learn. Amen. What the world called the Lord's Prayer, and just know how to say it, but don't understand it, and get filled with a whole bunch of religious formalities, uh, and don't have understanding. And then I, I was talking with what my brother, and I was saying, I found out in this journey, one of the strongest, and it seemed like greatest uh, spirits that of darkness is the spirit of being religious. Amen. I mean, you know, having form of godliness, but have not yet experienced the power. Amen. Operating in your life. Making you over. Just thinking amen on the surface of what they can read but never getting down in the depth of the spiritual understanding that comes from God. But what the Lord is doing in such a time like this, he's raising up preachers and teachers, evangelists and prophets and apostles to go forth in the power of his spirit to preach unto you that you might get to know him as Lord and Savior. 
Savior, that you might come into a personal relationship because the night, amen, is coming upon this world, amen, in a quick way, and it's for the church to get into the place that it should be, that the Lord can do a quick work in you, in me, amen, and close this thing down. Because at the end of the day, amen, our living should be to live again. Ah, uh, yeah, amen. I know they caught up in this, get as much as you can. Ah, uh, they caught up in the materialistic things. And I ain't talking about just the world. Amen. I'm talking about those, amen, that have got on the hallelujah side. Amen. That I mean, they still on the wayside. There's wayside here, us. We still got them sitting in the pews and you got their they, they heart still got some thorns in it. Amen. And the way they listening, amen, they let the word slip and some just some got stony. But at the end of the day, amen, look at here, you got a responsibility to keep your ground right. Amen, that when you hear the message, you can run with an understanding and keep what the Lord is saying. Somebody say amen. When we look at this on tonight, amen, we bring the attention to the word escape. When you escape, that means to get free of something. If you note the angel, amen, came with a message from above. And he told him, he said, escape for thy life. Now, look, at, I want you to understand as believers, Israel messed up and they didn't get it. Amen. You know, when the Lord saved them out of the land of Egypt, off from under their taskmasters, they forgot the other part that went with it when God gave Abram to let them know that he was going to meet them on the other side and he had a place to bring them into a land that flowed with milk and honey. And he was going to take them over into that land and they were going to provoke other nations. And Israel forgot. They let the word slip and they didn't mind that and pay that no attention. And what they did on the day Daily basis would have found themselves murmuring and complaining, although they got saved and delivered. And when they got saved and delivered, nobody can take that they didn't get saved. Amen. At the end of the day, brother, it's more to it than just getting saved. You got to keep that salvation. You got to stay delivered. You got to stay clean. You got to stay with the mind to love him and run for him. But Israel was prone to always messing up, always murmuring, always complaining, not being mindful, amen, of what the Lord had done for them. And what we find here, amen, over in Genesis, in chapter 19, when the angel said, look, you escape, you get free from all of this. Amen. On tonight, take this message personally, because what the Lord is saying unto us all is escape for your life. Because at the end of the day, yes, Lord, I want to do your will. Yes, Lord, I want to be a vessel. Yes, Lord. And it's all with the purpose of receiving the end of your salvation. You want to make your calling and election sure. You don't want to lose your inspiration. You don't want to lose your joy. You watch who you communicate with. Watch who you're hanging around. If your fizzle is going out, I got news for you. Escape for your life. Amen. Because at the end of the day, you want to stay clean. You want your candle to keep burning. Amen. You want your inspiration to keep flowing. You want to keep your eyes on the author and finisher of your faith. And so he said, look, escape. Escape means to get free from something, to avoid something. So the Lord said, I'm destroying this, and uh, we got to get you out. Because what we about to do is mess up some stuff. And I mean to tell you, he told them to escape. Now, look, it wasn't for a lot of them to figure out, hey, how you going to do it? Ah, uh, you know, how you gonna do this? Make me to know how, you know, the angels weren't there to do all that. Amen. When they came and came into that house, amen, they knocked at the people were so messed up and they saw them going to Lot House and that city was given over to demonic powers. And I don't know why folks don't think that ain't what's happening in the land today. We are still encountering demonic spirits. Amen. Oh yeah, they don't want the messengers of God. They don't want the angels of God to get through people and get to people to help people and the church got to get to a place that we can pray against principalities and demonic 
forces because look at here, it might not be a whole lot, but somebody won't out. Somebody say amen. And you receiving the end of your salvation is looking on the needs of others. Amen. And you got to do so with clarity and an understanding. And so we find out, amen, as they begin to make this exit, these angels had to deal with some stuff because they came to get Lot and his family out of that situation. And I mean, they got out. I mean, Lot should have really thanked God for Abraham. Amen. Because I mean to tell you, the Lord could have did that thing and didn't tell Abram nothing. And that could have came all up on Lot in his family. Amen. And I want you to know if you would hang in there with God and all of what you go through, through your trials, your tests, and your tribulation, and you realize and get to know God that God is your strength. He is your strength. He's your joy. He gives you power. Amen. Not to become like what's coming against you. I want to minister to somebody on tonight that means that, that you may be going through some things and it look like you got the short end of the stick. It looked like the devil is prevailing. It looks like you're being walked up the front up and down the back. But brother, don't you give up. Sister, don't throw the towel in. Amen. You stay right before God. This ain't about giving nobody a piece of your mind. This ain't about rending evil for evil. Uh-uh. It's about standing before God and letting God know I love you and I thank you for saving me and I refuse to look back or go back to be the person that I once was. You keep going with God and watch God overturn that thing. Somebody say amen. And so we find an urgent situation here. These are the days of urgency. Amen. Too many in Zion is at ease. In Zion, too many in Zion are at ease. They just going like they in cruise control and don't realize what's going on and what's about to take place. If it's ever been a time for you to pick up your pace, amen, and put some running in your feet and run for Jesus, that time is now. And on tonight, I've been given a mandate, amen, I've been given a mandate and instructions to blow the trumpet and cry loud, amen, that men and women that have got to know the Lord, look, it's time to run and save yourself from this untoward generation and put on the Lord Jesus and don't make no provision for how you once lived, how you once act and how you once was and be like Jesus. Somebody say amen. When I think about this as I'm standing here so many times, amen, I remember Jesus. When Jesus was in the gospel, he began to talk to some people. He said, boy, if Sodom and Gomorrah could hear what y'all hear. If they could have seen me do what y'all seen me to do, they would have repented long ago. Amen. Why y'all think they were so messed up and all that? If they'd have saw and heard what you hear. Amen. I sat right there one day listening. I said, oh, my God. That means this devil has really turned it on. Amen. Because see, that's what he do. He got men looking at other people and he measure himself by other people. But if it's ever been a time for the church to look unto Jesus and measure yourself by him. Amen. I mean, look at his life and see where you measuring up at. Amen. Get away from these preachers and sit up there. Hey, you know, I'm a shut up. I'm messing up all the time. Look at why you sitting there. You will never learn how to do nothing. You will never learn how to please God. And preachers, please, amen, stop telling people stuff like that. And give them an understanding. When Paul said he was a chief of the sinners, he didn't mean he was still in his sin. He was talking about what he did one time, what he did in the past. He wasn't talking about he was still in sin. That same writer said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may appear? How? He wasn't walking in his old ways. He was walking in Jesus. Somebody say amen. It's time to let folks know you can escape. You can escape the addictions. You can escape the habits. You can escape the broken heart. You can escape being abused. You can escape. All right, the devil is after you. You can escape him. There is a door you can run into and be safe. There's a strong tower. Amen. That if we were direct and preach it, would preach and say, come on to Jesus. You will find out he is your escape. When you get in there, amen, you can't go back out there where you come from. You got to learn how to live in him. Amen. That you can enjoy all that he come to give you. And some
some of these preachers, I just came to the conclusion. Amen. That look at here, you uh, uh, and I've always heard people. You know, you can't preach what you don't see. Neither can you teach it. If you don't know He's a God of power, because you haven't experienced it. If you don't know He can keep you from falling. If you don't know, Amen. What you used to do, He give you ability as been a son that He can teach you how to not weeble and wobble and fall down. He can teach you how to triumph over what used to triumph over you. If the preacher don't know it, He can't teach that, and so you can't even blame the hearers, Amen. And that's why I can see why the Lord always raised up a prophet, Amen. I can see why God used Elijah, Amen, to go against all them false prophets of hell. Because all they did was deceive Israel. Took them about a way, amen, that wasn't the will of God. Fed them with doctrines of men. Amen. Came up with their own ideology that the devil inspired and gave them. But God always had a man, amen, that was going to stand up for him. That wanted mankind to realize I'm still God. Amen. And I created you to do what I called you to do. This ain't about what you want to do. Your dreams, your aspirations. I created you in my image and likeness to use you for my glory. The earth is mine and the fullness thereof and all them that dwell therein. I'm looking at you tonight to let you know you got a purpose in this life. God got a purpose for you. Amen. He got a purpose. He want to use you. He want to show his power through you. He want to all walk with you, walk in you and use you for his glory. But you got to say, roll up your sleeves and say, look, I'm running for my life. I'm getting out of this spot that I'm in. I mean, at the end of the day, there's destruction that's on the land. And I'm not just talking about naturally in the war that's going on, but that devil is coming to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen. Backsliding spirit has been on the rise. He's turning men and women minds against him because those that are having an opportunity, they're not capitalizing on their chances. But you got to make your call in election sure. Amen. Some, amen, don't have the inspiration like they used to. But you got to get before God and say, Lord, give me back my inspiration. Put the running back in my feet. Help my mind. Help my spirit. Because I want to be saved. Somebody say amen. When I look at this tonight as I'm preparing to try to shut down here, when you're talking about escape, but the Lord began to deal with me concerning why he did what he did. And even back then, it was a platform to let man know what he was coming to do. When man didn't see no way and needed a way out. When man was bound all up and there was a price that needed to be paid for sin. Amen. That took up just one. Amen. God didn't counsel with no angels. He didn't send nobody else to do it. You know some things, amen, it take the man to do. You don't send a boy to do. And God said, hey, I'm coming down myself. I'm not coming in the way of an angel, but I'm coming down God as a man. The son of God becoming the son of man, that he can cause the sons of man to become the sons of God. Amen. He came down to pay the price. That was a price that needed to be paid for man to have a way of escape. And he loved man so. Amen. Because he created him and he didn't create him to go to hell. Now, I want to put that out there like that because, you know, the Lord been giving us, amen, to teach and preach. And God just gave us a message about perfectness and walking before the Lord being perfect. And I mean, 9.98% nine, nine, 9 of preachers is going to tell you you can't be perfect. And in, even though he told Abraham. And so, I mean, I wonder who they preaching for. Amen. You got to get in this Bible and all you'll get and get it understanding because you got to teach people how to perfectly walk before. Oh God. And in order to do that, amen, you got to get delivered from Webster Dictionary. You got to come out of the Bible commentaries. You got to get on your face and say, Lord, open up my understanding to the scriptures. How I met you to know, amen, when Jesus opened up the understanding to the disciples before they came, the apostles. He opened up their understanding to the scriptures. They didn't go to no other books. They weren't sitting there trying to listen to nothing because they had walked with Jesus. Jesus. And it takes the Lord to open up your understanding. Amen. And when
already opened up your understanding to the scriptures, you're going to understand it from Genesis to Revelation. You understand that this book goes together. Amen. You're going to realize he said that there, but this is what he meant. You're going to see, amen, him in the fullness because all of the scriptures, they testify of him. Somebody said, well, how can you go like that preacher? Amen. I was telling my wife earlier today, I said, you can see in this book, amen, it means so much in all you're getting to get it understanding. Amen. Because you'll find out in the Old Testament scripture. Amen. They said, look in here, don't mess with the leopard. The leopard can't be involved in this. Don't mess with this. And I mean all of this and all that the law it seemed to be they thought was excluding people because they didn't understand the law was not given that you might be able to keep it. Amen. But the law was given that you might know what sin was. And it was a schoolmaster. But when you don't have understanding, you start sitting up there looking at it and you think you're doing something, but you don't understand. But I told her what the Lord began to let me see. Amen. Concerning things. that Here it is. He said, don't mess with the leopards. He gave them things about the Sabbath. So when he came down to give them understanding of what he gave them in the old, he started healing leopards and doing things on the Sabbath. And it messed them up, mother. They said, wait a minute, you can't be Jesus. You can't be the Christ. You got a devil. You 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 doing this on the Sabbath. And plus you run around touching leopards. You let them touch you. He told us because they didn't have an understanding of what he told them. And this is the hour that we in because God said in Jeremiah 3 and 15, I give your pastors according to mine heart. We shall feed you not just with knowledge. Don't go get gain a bunch of knowledge. You wait till you get understanding of the knowledge you got first and then get some more knowledge because you got to understand what God gives you lest you be a pretzel and be a tool of the devil. And so we recognize here, he said look here, you got to get out of here. Hastily, y'all got to get up. We got to destroy. We on an excitement and them angels had to get them out of there. Motivate them. Inspire them. In that house, look, y'all get up. Get Make haste. We got to get out of here. Sometimes the way, amen, it seems like Zion move is not with haste. Amen. Look at what has happened, mother. Amen. COVID came in. Amen. And folks said, yeah, that's our way out. And they went out there. Now we got more folks that took more vacations since COVID has been. Since, amen, before COVID. Amen. They done got so used not to being and assembling themselves together that it's hard to come back together. They have lost sight of who God is and what God is calling for and still think they doing God's speed. But I come to let you know tonight, amen, uh-uh, you better escape because you're in a dangerous place. Amen, when you're hot for God, all you want to do is what he called you to do. And if there's ever been a time to not to forsake, to assemble yourself together as a man of some is, that time is now. Amen, God is counting on the church because he said, I called you out of darkness uh, into the marvelous light uh, to show forth the praises of me. I didn't call you out to get full of yourself. Uh, I didn't call you out to be a big wig. Uh, I didn't call you out to look down on nobody. But I call you out to be a light uh, to mankind that's in darkness uh, that you can show them the way uh, and let them know that look, Jesus is your way of escape. Uh, that you can do it in him. Uh, you can live in him. You can make it in him. Somebody might feel I did it a long time and I tried before to stop. I tried to get delivered and I tried to turn around. Well, I got a word for you. This time, try it with everything that's in you. Try it with all your heart. Try it with all your strength. Try it with all your mind. And if you give God his all, then God will give you his best. Somebody say amen. As we look Looking at this, it's time to escape. Why are you running? They sing songs back in the day. Amen. I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life. If anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? You tell them I'm safe. I'm sanctified. I mean, I'm set apart. I don't do what I used to do. I'm not who I used to be. He saved me from a devil head. I let them know 
I'm saved and sanctified. Holy Ghost filled and I got water baptized. I'm running for my life. And when you run it for your life, you find yourself running with salvation. You find yourself running with sanctification. You find yourself running with holiness because he is all of that. He's the one that sanctifies you. He's the one that sets you apart. He's the one that makes you holy. He's the one that gives you his nature. He's the one that gives you ideals. He's the one that gives you strength you ain't never had before. He's the one that heals you of all your broken places. It is God and in him you can do all things. Somebody help me tonight. Amen. I'm trying to get through it. But when we look at this, he said, escape for your life. And once you get to running, he said, the other one was don't look back. Oh, help me, Lord. He said, don't look back. Don't look back. Amen. He said, look, uh, once you get to running forward, I don't want you looking back. He told the angels to tell Lot and his family, don't you look behind you. Everything, your liberty, your deliverance, your salvation, your safety is in front of you. If we can get men and women to trust that their life is here with Christ and God, to realize when he saved you, he saved you from a devil's hell. You was on your way to a burning pit. You was on your way to being eternally lost. You should run with gladness, run with joy, run with thanksgiving. You should run to want to see him. I mean, he said, don't you look back. Today, amen, they come in. And I mean, they, they they just move so slow. Amen. They just so, I mean, like they got on, look, the hour's late. Uh-uh, uh-uh, look at here. It's time to pick the pace up. It's time for you to give attention to God. If he say move, get up. I don't care if you ain't got one change of clothes on. Get up and get up out of there. Amen. And run for your life. Amen. The enemy will give man thoughts and give them, make them mindful of that that's behind and have you looking back. And we're going to find out when we get into this. They all ran. He Remember the message was escape for thy life. You got to take this person. What he say unto you, you have to receive. And run this race with patience. You got to run. And if your hand is in the hand of somebody that's running. Y'all just keep running. But brother, if that is a look back on anybody have, don't you look back. Amen. Don't look back like Lot's wife. Because when you look back, this is what looking back look like. God has saved me and brought you out. Looking back look like this. You grabbing the world. You taking on worldliness. You're not saying goodbye world. Amen. I know they sang that song, Goodbye World. I thought it was always a little comical. Amen. Say goodbye world because to say goodbye, you got to turn and look at it. Amen. Brother, I, I, I did one of the ones when he called me out. I ran and didn't say bye to nobody. Amen. I just kept going because to say bye, you go back and let me explain some things to the next thing you know, you don't get back. Amen. Look at here. He said, don't look back. I know, see, some songs don't line up with your spirit, with your understanding. Talking about good, bad words. Just turn around and wave. You got to turn around and wave to somebody. This angel said, don't look back. Don't look behind. I ain't got to explain nothing to you. I don't care what I left. I, you can keep it all. I don't care about the money. I don't care about what we in. I'm running for my life. Uh -uh, that's an excuse. Don't you use your liberty as a cloak, an occasion to do what the devil want to do to destroy you. You got to run. Count it as loss. They got to run it. He said, don't look back. Don't look back. Now, no, because we have the rest of the Bible. This is Genesis. When the Lord saved you, I want to put something before you. The ultimate is he saved you from to him. And when you really understand your salvation and you travel on in the book, you know Jesus did preach on hell a whole lot. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. You remember over there he talked about that, that, that rich young ruler. Oh, yeah. 
and he began to make them know it's in everybody Bible. I know, you know, sometimes it's, you know, people don't like hearing about hell. Amen. But I tell you, when I hear about hell, they help me keep my focus. That is not where I want to be. Tell you that. That's not, they saved me from that life to not end up there. Uh uh, this one right here, I realize the scripture to let me know he made hell for the devils and his angel. Look here, don't get, don't, let us not forget now, the earth is the Lord's. He made, he created the heavens and the earth, and he also made a hell. Amen. Hell is his, amen. And if he made a hell, somebody gonna end up there. Amen. Now, I'm gonna leave it to everybody else and wonder if it's gonna be you, but I've already made up in my mind it's not gonna be me. Amen, amen. So I'm not playing around over here. Amen. I'm not rising up trying to play in none of that. Look at that. This thing is serious to me. And I realized the way I once lived, the devil had a hold on me and gave me to do everything I ever done. Amen. But Jesus looked beyond my fault. And he came into my life one day and said, escape for your life. And my God, I heard the gospel message and started to run. Amen. Not knowing where I was going. I just wanted to run and be with him. Amen. And as he was bringing them out, the angel said, don't you look back. Amen. When I think about this, because when I'm here, the Holy Ghost bring the rich men that, 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 that died. And that man said, oh, my God. Uh, I didn't understand that this place is real. Uh, Lord, will you let me get back? I got five brothers. I believe if one go back from the dead, amen, and tell them, then they won't come to this place. He down there still lying. Amen. Because the way you die, that's the way you're going to be raised. And so you watch these rascals out here telling you, you know what the Lord no, and I'm still doing what I used to do. That doing what you used to do would have you somewhere you don't want to be. Somebody say amen. Amen. So at the end of the day it's time to get some order about yourself. It's time to watch and understand whose eyes is upon you. He know you his son, he know you his daughter, and he know you can do better. Amen. Did you not know we all that have raised kids and got grandchildren and you taught them don't do this don't do that and y'all all know some of y'all the Lord have to help you real good because you'll beat them in a heartbeat soon as they get those disobedient you get that look here I came to old school they get that switch they get that pep Pauline Keene get that that whip amen she'll get a shoe and throw it at you you found yourself being disobedient and you would get something wait a minute now what did I tell you amen look at here now look at God know if he teach you and show you and make known to you and give you the victory and power he know you ain't got to continue in that way don't let no preacher tell Tell you, we, you know, we all sinners and can't nobody live saved. That's somebody that don't know the Lord because Jesus died a terrible death. He went to judgment hall to judgment hall and it wasn't for you to live no sloppy life. Let's get this thing together. I know, I know some of these dogmatic preachers, amen, they have taught this thing and they make it about don't, 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 don't. And then we get on the other end of the spectrum to try to meet that and we talk about what God give you grace, God give you grace. Don't fall for what they're doing. Amen. You got to teach this thing together because heaven is real and hell is too. And you got to make the people to know, hey, if you do right, heaven belongs to you. Now, if you don't do right, you ain't going to get what belongs to you because having saved your people from their sin, they didn't end up receiving or reaping what they were saved for. You don't want that to be you. You got the purpose in your heart. I'm getting in. Uh-uh, uh-uh, heaven belongs to me. Amen. Look at here. I don't care what that devil saying. Shut up. I got the victory over this thing. You got to start talking back to that devil and let him know I ain't looking back. He saved me to make it. And we find out these angels, they begin to run and they were walking, they was running with a lot of this family. And they begin to get up out of that thing. They gave them the orders and they gone. And that wife messed around while she running. The devil is working with her mind because I'm telling you now you can get saved. Just because you get saved don't mean the devil is not going to make you mindful. So you have to come into another realm and grow up and know how to cast them down and know how to tell that devil you are lying. Look, you are lying and doing that no more. Y'all don't believe it? Well, that's your that's your portion. Then, not just I'm not, if you don't want to believe it, I believe it. I'm out of here. 
I ain't trying to convince somebody that don't want God. I tried, Lord. Shake the dust off my feet and I'm going the other way. Look, I want men and women believers to know, amen, there's height in God. There's growth. You got to get to places in God that after he saved you, you got to go higher. If you know when Abraham, when Adam came out and the Lord began to give the instruction to the angel, he said, escape to the mountain. The first thing out of Adam's mouth, Lord, we can't go to the mountain. Can we go to the plain? When you get, he said, not so. Not so the mountain. See, he's looking at his ability. Forget who bought, forget who bought you out. He going to immediately, after getting rescued in their own their way, hey, let us go here. Not so. And the forbearance and long suffering of God, this is what he did. He permitted the angel to say, okay, go on over there. Hmm? Because he's going to teach mankind. When God say to the mountain, that's where you go. He went over to the plain. And when you read the story in the scriptures, you find out where God let that fire burn up in the plains. And they had to move higher. From where he told them to go from the beginning. See, too many, too long we question God when he says something instead of just being obedient. Because we won't, we won't let go. We won't let go. He said, come higher, go higher to a place. You know, hey, hey, I'm doing a whole lot better. Well, do better than what you do. Get you the place where God will have you be roll up your sleeves and be better. God is counting on you to grow up and be better. He wants you to be better that you can demonstrate his power. Uh-uh, don't let nobody lie about you and your sin and your wrong and your weakness. He said, behold, I give unto you power to become sons and daughters. Amen. All this sloppy, uh, uh, you know, all this sloppy love that folks do. And they talk about they love God. And but do any and everything. But I love the Lord. You know, my relationship with the Lord, look at him, man. If you don't get that stuff together, that devil will rip your mind out and give you his. Amen. At the end of the day, he saved you to make it. And when he saved you, the devil do not stop. Amen. Hell is too hot and it's too long to stay there forever. At the end of the day, it's worth it. And I'm not preaching this like this, that you can be afraid of hell. But I'm just coming as a, uh, you know what, my natural occupation. Uh, uh, even as me being a preacher, look, look here, I'm an insurance man. So on tonight, you know what I'm doing? I'm selling fire insurance. I'm selling fire insurance. You know how they come to me for home insurance. You want to get that fire insurance on your home. I want you to know you are a house. I'm a house. You a house. Amen. And fire will burn a house down. And at the end of the day, praise the Lord, I want you to know I'm just not going to leave you right there. But I'm also give, I'm giving you fire insurance that Jesus is your insurance. It keeps your house from getting burned up. But you got to put on the Lord Jesus and make no provision for your own ways. You got to learn how to live and walk in the spirit. You got to learn how to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I mean, the Lord began to deal with me with something here. Amen. Even that upon this rock, we're about to turn them these prayer meetings into a place where the people of God can come in and say, Lord, fill me. Amen. Because some people have not been filled with the Holy Ghost yet. And I want you to know after you acquire your salvation, look, he got the Holy Holy Ghost for you. And when you get the Holy Ghost, he give you power. He's able to walk with you and give you understanding. He can talk with you and he can talk over your mind. I mean, he can talk to you while the devil's talking and when you get the Holy Ghost, you can hear the Lord talking. I mean, brother, because he is a comforter and the Lord gave me. Amen. These meetings, Mother Anderson, what we gonna do, we gonna come in. Amen. We gonna, we gonna do a presentation for God. 
and those that's hungry and those that need a refilling because see there's refillings over here sometimes you just need a refilling amen while you're running for your life you know you get you get a little weary amen your car can get a little low on gas we've taken trips together as a family going around and we got a full tank and we burn it up on that highway and the next thing you know that it, that it, uh, that it went on down and you got to pull all over and get a refilling amen and ain't nothing wrong with getting a refilling because we need a refilling of the Holy Ghost that you can be inspired and have power you know your car don't even run right when your gas is low that thing get to sputtering and all that but it's something like when you know you got a full tank you can maximize everything Room, that thing will go with power. And God says, son, amen, let them meetings be where somebody can come in. And I don't care what you got to do. You bring yourself before God. And you say, look, Lord, take this out of me and me out of it. I don't want this. I don't want that. And you let the Lord know, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I want your spirit. I want you to fill me with power from above that I can walk right, talk right and do right. I want to be a vessel that you can use for your glory. See, the Holy Ghost is real. It's that that has kept me down through the years and I'm persuaded it'll keep you because it is a comforter. It is a consoler. Oh, yes it is. It'll help you through whatever you got to go through. That you ain't got to just be calling on the phone. That Holy Ghost will get to talking to you and you will say, yes, Lord, amen, and roll up your spiritual sleeves and fight that devil tooth and nails as I prepare to conclude here. Amen. Look here as we're standing. We don't want to be found like the rich young ruler. We want to escape. We want to escape, escape the addictions, escape the bondages, escape the weaknesses that was in your life. And you do this through Jesus. He said, I am the door. If you want to escape, get in me. If you want to be healed, get in me. If you want strength, get in me. If you want power, get in me. I'm the door. I'm your way of escape. And all he's saying, when I bring you to that point, don't look back. We learn from a lot of them. Don't be trying to bargain where you want to go. Because it's going to be like the Lord said anyway. Did you not know when Moses did this? Good, good. Moses, one day the Lord was talking to Moses. And he said, you know what? I'm done with them. Talking about the people. And Moses told the Lord, and I, I always, I, I pray grace and help and mercy all over me when I say this. Moses said, if you block their name out, Blood mine out too. Because I love y'all. But I ain't loving nobody that much to go to hell. And I believe in, you know, theologians and people that like to look at it because they like to see themselves as leaders. And they like to look at it and love. Wasn't nothing love about that that was foolish. Because you got to save yourself. If you don't want to go, hey, I wanted to see you make it. But if you don't want to make it, I want to make it. When Moses said that right there, I remember years ago when I saw that, I said, oh, Lord. It was like the Lord let me see the angel in heaven start singing, praising God, getting God's mind off of what he said. Because he got too close to them people. Moses into the people. I don't care who we are as servants. You give all of your heart to God. Because after he did that, go check your Bible. God said, them your people. And God walked with Moses and watch this. Y'all know who made it? Moses. Moses made it. Did the people make it? No. 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 It was just, look, it made me wonder like this. What if he would just let God do what he was going to do? Then his journey could have been a whole lot without a whole lot of headache because he carried a bunch of baggage that almost made him miss it. Come on, kid. 
I'm saying this to some of my comrades out here, preachers and pastors and in leadership, because you done got discouraged and you done got, well, look at all the people. My numbers done went down. And it seems like don't nobody want to come. You better get your eyes off of people and get your eyes on the God that called you to do what you're doing. You don't get no badge because you got 500, 5,000 people. I don't care if it's just you and your wife, you and your children. You go up in there with some excitement and preach to the walls and let God know, look here, I want to make it. If don't nobody else want it, let me in this thing because hell is not for me. Ain't no air conditions down there. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. That's a place that's beyond the love of God. God ain't got it. It's beyond the love of God. That's a place of torment. Y'all remember what that man said? Give me some that can cool my starching. Look, it's it's real. And it's and don't let these folks tell you, you know, that's what it is on earth. That, uh, that hell is worse than this that is on earth. When you're on this earth, you can get it right. You go to hell, you no more repenting. You don't get no chance. Don't let these folks with these religions teach you all that stuff. You know, right now, this is what we in hell right now. You alive, we on earth right now. When you die, you, if you don't believe it now, you're going to know it when it's over. Amen. Because at the end of the day, we're going to have to stand before the one that created the heavens, the earth, and made hell. And we got to balance it out. So it's not my brother, it's not my mother. My sister, it's me, oh Lord. I'm standing in need. Don't you let me stay right here. Grow me, build me, establish me. Give me what I need for the journey. Fill me with your presence. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Lord, recharge me. Refill me. That's when we get to doing that. Then I'm going to tell you something. The Holy Ghost, the windows of heaven opens up because the church gets into its place. That army began to rise up and he said, there it is. Well, I'm going to do a quick work for you. Ah, now you're just right. It's all about me and you see it's not about you. Amen. And that's what he was doing with Lot. And Lot ran out. They said, let's go to these plains. And I'm telling you, if he didn't keep moving them, he was going to get burned up. Because he was going to get consumed with that fire. See, fire and brimstone is different. Man can make fire. He can't make no brimstone. Ooh, Jesus. He can't make brimstone. That's, that's, that's some heat. That God, that's some, oh, Lord. Fire burn the flesh and these bones up. Brimstone gets on their soul. Lord, have mercy. No way it wasn't made for us, y'all. And that's why I'm preaching like I'm preaching tonight because he chose you and called you that you might escape the corruption, escape that end goal of what the enemy has. He don't want you to make it. He's going to try to make it look like there's pleasure in sin. But you got to know ain't no pleasure in that stuff I came out of. My eyes is open. That's a trick. I want the more of God. I want to be righteous. I want to be in his righteousness. I want to be covered with him. Amen. I know the devil should not be able to offer the believers nothing because you got the best thing when you got Christ. Keep your eyes on him. I was one of these ones when I came out. I tore up telephone numbers. I, I look at here. I don't want. I don't want nothing to attach me to what I once was. Uh huh. You know. I, I, and I'm so glad I obeyed God. He said, "Look at here." I can remember I was at the house. People were down in my house. I was involved with. I had just got saved, and my daddy. I guess because he had dealt with so many brothers and people in the church when they pass or come up. He said, "Hey." Do you want me to tell them that you're done? I said, no. Give it to me. Don't call me no more. I'm set. Goodbye. Boom. I don't owe you nothing. Everybody calling. Everybody coming. Say, look, that ain't how I live no more. I'm set. No. 
I'm gone. And watch this. I wasn't dialing them and they knew I was real and they wasn't calling me. When you're serious about your salvation, mother, you would do what you got to do to escape. And when you've experienced the very things that have taken you down and the very things that have kept you off balance, look here, you don't see that like the way you used to see. And I was like this, nah, -uh, don't tell me. I don't want nothing from you. None of this. I'm not looking back going forward. And I look at where, I, where it got me to today. It got me to the place I am today. I had trials and tests, but it kept me with a mind not to look back. I went through scourges and all type of markets, all type of fire. But never not one day have I complained because he gave me a heart to love him. And I found out, y'all, this is the secret. If you can look to him, he lets you see you can make it. If you can keep your eyes on Jesus, he don't let you feel like you're missing nothing. If you keep your eyes on the assignment, he lets you realize why you're running. I mean, my God, you be running and don't even know how healing is setting in on you. Because you just get so caught up in your salvation. Your mind begin to just be well. Your soul begin to be well. Because you just run and you praising him. Some of you don't realize when you first got saved, he brought you through some of your toughest journeys. Amen. When you was coming out. Amen. And now that you got out, you slowed up and you got negligent. Let the word slip. Got too close to the world. Evil communication. Now you're sitting up in here and you're doing all this and you're about to make a pact with the enemy. But God is saying, no, uh, you escaped for your life. I bought you out for you to run and don't you ever look back. I bought you out for you to make it. I want to see you make it. You mine. You my son. You my daughter. And I want you to know if you have messed up, it ain't over yet. All you got to do is get up tonight and tell that devil, no, uh, I'm not going with you. I'm giving my life back to God. I'm receiving this word and I'm getting back in my life a place. I'm getting some more to pop my life. I want you to know that you can do it. Amen. Because the lost son did it. He was in that hog pen and he came to himself. He realized I messed up. I said against my father in heaven. Ain't got no business right here. I'm a, I'm, my father, I'm a son and I'm living like a servant. The Bible says he was in a hog pen. You know what the Lord devil is about today? If he was in a hog pen, and y'all know Jews didn't eat hogs. That's right. That's right. right? That's right. They ain't messing with them pigs and swines. That's right. That brother, that son, hooked up with the Gentiles and started living like they live. Evil communication corrupt good men. And messed around and they gave him a job out there feeding the swine. That's good, sir. Everything that devil give you when you ain't with God is low. Out there and was about to eat what the hogs eat. Mm -hmm. And came to himself. Said, wait a minute. I'm, good. I'm going home. Now I want you to know something because too long and I'm finna stop behind this. Too many places because they have not been matured. They have not got to the fathership. Even the leaders are not in the fathership. Because you got to go from children to young men to fathers. And so what we find out, mother, the father saw him come and said, look at my son. He was dead, but he's alive. And was happy. He didn't, he didn't have to get in and go through no protocol. The father was like this because he had already provided a way of escape and he knew he was the escape. He's the door. Just him coming to himself in that hall pen, he got restored right there. Yeah. Mm, got his right mind back. Right. Went home and watched this. This is where the bulk of the church is at. That brother <laughs> looked at him and was like this. He wasn't happy. The brother, was, the brother had a mind like this. Look at him. He done wasted his substance. Look at him. Wait a minute, why y'all making a dance for him? I done been here, ain't left. You telling him to go get the fatter can? 
We about to pull out stuff we ain't ain't on and on know how long. Everybody's all happy. This what the, this how the brother was. No spirit like the father. See, you got to escape bad spirits. The brother didn't have the right spirit. That's right. That's right. If it was left up to the brother, the brother would have said, "Look at here." You wasting a whole bunch of stuff. You go over there and work it off. You work it off. But the father was like this. Come on. Come on. That's my son. Hey, before he even got there, he said, look, don't kill the fat of cat. We're going to have a party and we're going to make merry up in here because my son is coming home. They got to move it and get things together. And the man was wore out. Making a journey, because see, when you do the wrong thing, bro, that's why you gotta watch these folks that will sit there and try to tell you, you know, hey, you can't lose it, you can't lose it, brother. You can lose what God saved you for. Don't let nobody tell you you can't go to living wrong, doing wrong things. You're gonna be, you gonna stand in need of some deliverance and a savior again, in a real way. Come on here, amen. And that brother came on in there, and when they that son came, and that brother would never have. He wasn't happy for him because he was immature. That's what it was. He was immature. He should have, he, he, he's looking at it. He should have been like, man, that's my brother. He should have never lost his love for his brother. I want, I want, I want to see you, man. I, I've, been, I've been praying. I'm thinking about you. Sitting up here. Don't do all that. Wait a minute. You gotta sound like to me. You had a spirit like Judas. See, and I'm saying this like this. Somebody can be gone and they in the hall pen and you can be lost in the house because your spirit ain't right. You got so many so-called Christians that don't have God's spirit. And the Bible said, if you don't have his spirit, you're none of his. He wasn't talking about if you've been filled with the Holy Ghost. If you don't have his spirit, what is his spirit? Love, kindness. Meekness, long suffering, forgiveness. If you're not walking in that, looking, the devil is deceiving you and setting you up for the big black mouth of him. Because the only way you escape that, you got to put Jesus on. Put on his righteousness. And what he do is he forgives and he long suffer. And he rejoices and heaven rejoices for one person repenting on their sin. I want to stop right there because I mean there's so much to say. And I see what God got us going to go to by the Spirit. Because we got to balance these things out. Don't let nobody tell you God ain't concerned about what you do on a daily basis because he is. And stop letting the devil deceive and fool you to make you think, oh, if I see it, I got to advocate with the Father. See, you premeditating stuff. Mm -mm. If you fall into dive temptation, you do something you know. And when he restored you, one thing about these biblical brothers, when they did they wrong, they didn't repeat it. That's right. God blessed them, and they walked differently. That's right. Now somebody said, "There you go, Pastor. You're teaching works." No, I'm not. I'm teaching that you believe God, because Jesus said this, and it's in the red. This is the work. Now, see all that other stuff that y'all call works. He gave the church a work to do. And he said, this is the work and that you believe on me. Believe on he who he has sent. And when you believe on him, you got to work to believe. You got to cast doubt down. You got to pull down. You got to press your way. You got to tell that devil it is written. You got to walk through it. You got to stand still, be still, and be strong in the Lord. You got to roll up your spiritual sleeves and keep believing God. If he say you're a new creature, you're a new creature. If he say you're an overcomer, you're an overcomer. If he say you're a victory, walk in the victory. You don't have to give in to it no more. Hallelujah. And you go ahead on and walk down before the Lord and be thou perfect. Is that all right? Stand on your feet tonight. Hallelujah. I want to pray for those in internet land. Father, I thank you for these that are hearing this message. You said faith come by hearing and hearing by your word. What love that you have on tonight. That you will send a word unto us that we might escape to help the hearers on tonight. To run with focus. To bring our focus in. And I mean pick the pace up. 
I pray, God, on tonight by the power of your spirit that this message will register and sink down into the ears of the hearer. That they would be more, more, more fervent, more circumspectly about their walk on a day-to-day -day basis. Being mindful of the ultimate of what this is all about. You saved us with purpose. And Lord, the reward if we fulfill the purpose is heaven, not hell. You saved us to make it and not be lost. And I pray on tonight that the soul that hear this is under the sound of my voice. That they will cleave unto this word and be all that you called them to be. Give them to know that you're not going to hold nothing against them. That they repent of sin. If they ask for forgiveness, you're faithful and just to do it. That they don't have to return that way no more. Oh, let that hunger and thirst hit Zion again. That we can be the church like the first church. That was full of inspiration, full of the Holy Ghost. Walking in your nature, which is holiness. Walking in your spirit, which is sanctification. It is you that sets us apart. Help us to despise worldliness and love godliness. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Bless the hero tonight. And all of God's people said, amen. amen. You that's in that land, you go with God, he'll go with you. Look here, come on up on this rock. Let's give God a